Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. I recently got a new computer and I was in the process of reinstalling everything. And with that, of course, I also wanted to do some cleanup of old files. And I reinstalled VS Code and I decided also to do some renewal, some cleanup on my extensions and my settings. So I took some time to look into the extensions that I was using and if there was any new alternatives, anything new that I could add and use now. So I made a selection of some of these new extensions that I am using now um, and I hope you can find some that you didn't know about maybe and that it helps you with your coding productivity. So let's start with the basics. I used to use this extension, Setting Sync, to keep my settings, you know, in sync across um, devices like my desktop, my work computer, my laptop, and so on. But now, as you can see, you don't need this anymore. Now you can use the native sync settings from VS Code. And to do that, you can just go here to Preferences and click on Turn on Settings Sync. Now this is going to ask you to log in and you can can either choose Microsoft or with GitHub account. And I'm gonna do this with the GitHub here. And as you can see, just gonna take me to this white screen to a login screen, but it's actually just loading my information because I'm already logged in in this browser. So it's just automatic. Now, when whatever device I log in again in VS Code with my GitHub account, I'm gonna have my extensions, my shortcuts, and my snippets available to me. Now, the bookmarks extension is one of the most useful tools if you're working with a large code base. And I used to use this a lot. With this extension, you can just, you know, set some bookmarks to quickly navigate between some sections of code. So, for example, if you have a code in a file that is related to a piece of code that is in a another file, you can just bookmark both of them and work with them kind of easier. You can just switch between them. Or even in the same file, if you're working with different sections that are related to each other, but they are far apart, you can also just bookmark and then just quickly jump between them. So this is pretty cool and I highly recommend you to play around with it if you haven't yet. Now for readability, one of the tools I use since I started learning how to code is Prettier. This is a code formatter that automatically formats the code for you once you hit save. And you can also, of course, set all these rules for formatting in your settings in VS Code as well. And Prettier is just gonna follow up with your rules. This one is a very pretty basic one, VS Code icons. It just helps you to identify the types of files you have in your folders according to the content and the extension. And it uses little cute icons for that. Look at them. They are so cute. Better Comments is an extension that I found out recently and I have been playing around with it just a little bit. And it's super useful to, you know, just organize your comments. So you can increase the readability so it's easier for you to find the comments and to understand what they are about because you can categorize your comments into alerts, into carries, to do's, highlights, etc. So it even has this different colors. It's super useful and I really recommend. Now we have also the code spell checker. And if you're coding in a language that it's not your mother language, or even if it is, sometimes, you know, typos happen. And this extension simply identifies typos and, you know, just simple mistakes in, in your words. And another extension that I recently added is the to-do highlights. And it's quite useful to just highlight the to-dos that you have in the middle of the code. Um, however, it overlaps a little bit with the better comments. So you can use, either use both of them or you can use just the better comments. It's up to you. Another one super useful is the indent rainbow and I tell you this saves lives. This helps you to identify the indentation to, you know, make it easier to read the code, to find what is inside what, simply to make it easier to understand and to maintain the code honestly. If you have to modify something, it's just easier to see where you have to work. Another super useful one is the auto rename tag and the auto close tag, by the way. For example, you have an h1, a heading one in an HTML file and you want to turn it into a h3, you just have to rename the first one or the 
closing one and it's going to rename both. So this is really useful. And the auto tag, whenever you open or you start a tag, whatever it is, like a div or a paragraph, whatever comes in your mind, this thing here is going to create the closing tag automatically for you. So I really also recommend if you're not using this yet, you're missing. Cool. Then this one is also one that I found recently. It's also an AI coding assistant, kind of like ChatGPT, but this is more focused on code completion. And the cool thing is it kind of learns from your coding style and suggestions are based on them. The only thing though, for this one, you need to create an account and to log with your account in order to use it properly. Awesome, now talking about styling. For CSS, there are two that I use the most, which is CSS Peak and Colorize. CSS Peak is super helpful also when working with Peak projects and with tons of files for CSS. So with CSS Peak, you know, you can just find in your HTML file or JavaScript file, you can find a, um, something that is being defined to a certain CSS class and you can quickly just pick into this definition to see what is the uh, what are the properties added to this specific class. And the colorize helps a lot when you have the color codes. Even in hex or in RGBA, whatever it is, you can see a preview of that color directly in VS Code. Now snippets. Any extension that offers some snippets for multiple languages is always a must for whatever language you like to program with. I use mostly JavaScript, Vue, React snippets, but you can also find for Python, you can find for R, you can find snippets for everything. And it saves a lot of time. With simple commands, you can add the basic structures of functions, for example, and just go ahead and complete them. I also use this quite often. I recommend you to always have an extension uh, specific to the language you like to code with in VS Code. Now Git. Git is also an essential part of our lives as developers. Git links is going to, you know, just enhance Git git for vs code for example it's going to show you directly in your code it's going to show the blame annotations which i love the name but it's just saying who the hell made the change so no one can hide um and apart from that of course there's also git history extension which is more it offers a more Git history is more like an interactive way to see the whole Git log. I have all the changes and you can see it's easier to visualize um, everything that has happened inside this uh, specific repository. And I don't think there's a person that uses Git that doesn't have the NVS code that doesn't have Git history as an extension as well. Now, there is a previewer extension that I love the most. <laughs> the most important one is the regex previewer. Yeah, regular expressions are monsters with many heads for many people. Come on, don't lie to me. <laughs> you know it's true. <laughs> But anyway, sometimes, most of us, uh, sometimes we just reuse them from Stack Overflow and we don't know if, what the, the hell they're doing anyway. But when you initiate this, this extension, it opens um, a little window right next to it. You can give like some text and on the, on, in your code, then you create the expression and you can see if that expression is going to correspond to the filtering that you're looking for um, in this other file from the extension. So super useful and saves a lot of time of research of stack overflow readings and everything and testing and another one if you work with data in excel files the excel viewer is also super useful it's super simple what else can i say it just helps you to visualize the excel files directly in vs code handy isn't it that's handy now testing it's not i cannot say that this is something that i do all the time I should but it didn't you know I'm more like a console log kind of person but I have been trying to get more into it slowly and I found this code runner extension which can run the just code snippets in more than 30 different programming languages you can execute little snippets from your code with this extension and you can see directly in VS code what the output would be so I guess no more excuses for no testing right 
And another one, since I love console log so much, is the turbo console log. Yeah, who never had to console log entire sections of code, right? Now with this extension, you can just select whatever you want to log and the extension is going to create the console log statement for you. So these are the extensions that I use the most. I hope one of them at least is new for you and you're gonna try it out and let me know. It's just also some tips of things you can um, add to your VS Code to make your life easier. Let me know what you think. Is any of those interesting for, interesting for you? Maybe you use one that I don't know about and you would like to share in the comments. That would be lovely. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. And I wish you a lovely rest of the day or night or afternoon, whatever you are, whenever you're watching this. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye!